Hey, what's up, Unbroken Nation? How could they do this at home with themselves in a way that could, I don't know, necessarily be therapeutic, but at least it would be something that would start planting a seed about this being a modality for them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think first I would encourage um, anyone who's interested in this to to explore different types of painting and drawing media. So like I said, I know, I can, I've, I've learned to, to notice in my body what days I need to use more resistive media like a pencil and what days I just need to paint and express myself. So I would, I would encourage listeners to, to go get a Crayola watercolor tray that you can find in the school supply aisle of your grocery store. It's easy to obtain. Get some crayons, some markers, some colored pencils. I also really love oil pastel, which I often call like an oily crayon. It's a little more fluid. It glides on the paper and you can blend it more so than a regular crayon. So, so get a variety of, of those art materials that can be just the Crayola, you know, student grade. It doesn't have to be fancy and just play, just experiment with it. You know, that's another really important part of art therapy that I hear from clients that they, they love the expressive quality of it and that they can just play because as trauma survivors, we've not always been allowed to play and to be free in that sense. And so again, it's that safe container of the art making process where we can play. Um, also, I often say that, that within um, the creative process, there's no impulse control required. So as long as you're not harming yourself or others, you know, you're not sniffing toxic chemicals, then, then there's really no impulse control required. You can do what you want. So I would encourage anyone who's interested in this to just play with different kinds of art media and notice how your body responds. Notice how your body responds on different days. Notice what you're feeling. Do some journaling, some writing about that. And then second, um, kind of a foundational art therapy intervention that I use um, with my art therapy clients, also with, with my coaching clients. This is something I teach that definitely can be done um, easily at home without an art therapist, is essentially a scribble drawing. And this is something that all art therapists um, use and it sounds silly, but it is really fascinating and really impactful. So literally, you know, I always encourage clients to imagine if that emotion was, was coming from your head, because we often think our emotions in our mind, right? They're in our head, they're not in our body. So imagine if that was coming down from, from your mind, from your brain, through your arm, out through that, that color pencil, that marker, that crayon onto the paper. What, what kind of line would that make? How would that move across the page? And so obviously, you know, something like anger for most people that has a lot of energy to it, right? So that's going to be like a fast zigzaggy scribble line for most people and choose a color that goes with that feeling for you. Then maybe, you know, calm, sad, um, relaxed, excited, joyful, like whatever, whatever feeling you're having or just whatever feeling you kind of feel on a regular basis. Um, practice how you would express that literally just through a scribble using line, shape, and color, not trying to make it look like a happy face or a sad face. Just how would that, would that emotion move out of your body if it was a line on the page? And then I encourage um, that process that I explained that I do and that I teach to my clients of the, the responsive writing or what Pat Allen referred to as the witness writing. So you're, you're witnessing your art. You're kind of, um, you know, oftentimes in art therapy, we, we think about the piece of art as kind of the third person in the therapy session. So it's like there's mm. the client, there's the therapist, and then there's the art over there. And when we take it physically outside of ourselves and we have this visual representation of it there on the paper, in the sculpture, on the canvas, then it makes it, it makes it feel safer to talk about. And there's some sort of ref, what I call reflective distance there. So, so we distance ourselves from it a little bit emotionally by taking it out of our body, out of our brain and putting it on the paper. And then, and then that writing process creates even more of that distance. And like I said, taking things kind of from our feeling brain to our thinking brain. So, so ask a question. Um, I like to start out though, by it can, it can be, it can be hard to sort of get into the question asking if you're not used to it. So I encourage you just to start out by kind of writing your observations about your feelings for bull drawing. So write, you know, there's a yellow blob in the corner. There's some black lines here, you know, just describe what you see. And then maybe ask yourself a question. Is there anything that surprised you? Like, what do you see here? And then start asking your artwork questions. Like, what do you need? What is this? What is this black squiggle line? You know, what does that mean? What are you trying to tell me? How do you feel? Again, what do you need is a really powerful one for most of my clients. Um, and just write down, this is very much a free association form of writing. So you're writing whatever comes to your mind um, without judgment, without editing. And then later, um, I think you'll find as you read back over it, there, there's a lot of insight to be gained in that. And um, I often practice this as, 
as sort of a journaling technique, just in my sketchbook or journal, I'll do a quick scribble and then do that, that writing in response. And again, many of my clients find that really helpful as well.